Hello, 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 hello. Welcome, oh, is my microphone on actually? That's okay. Hello, 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 welcome, good evening, welcome back to the channel, and today is a very important day because the 92nd Oscar nominations have uh, just been released, and I'm getting straight on it, and I'm going to talk about my predictions, because it's been a huge year for film. So this year we've seen the end of the Star Wars saga, we've seen the end of um, this Marvel Phase 3, it's done so much for cinema, uh, we've had the highest grossing film of all time happen this year, uh, that was Avengers Endgame, and uh, we've also seen other records be smashed. This Oscar is going to be brilliant, I can't wait to see who wins, if I had a pound for every time I said this on the channel, I'll be able to fund my own movie and take it to the Oscars. Uh, this is an opinion, if you don't agree with it, you're wrong, everyone knows that. I'm, I'm obviously joking, it's called satire, Com it's called comedy, let me set up this light. Oh, there's so many shadows though. Right, so yeah, last year, if you're not new around, if you're, if you're subscribed already, then you probably saw my video last year, I did predictions. A lot of people were mad uh, at me because I made predictions for films I haven't seen. Ironically, I still was correct, guessed it quite well, but the thing is, I've watched so many clips and extracts from films I haven't been able to see because maybe when I had time to go see them, they just got out of cinema, or, I just didn't want to see him. Uh, <laughs> I've read so many extracts and reviews, uh, I kind of have an idea, Ooh, you know, what it's like and stuff. Also, I'm not a critic, I don't review films personally, I don't like doing that stuff. I feel like I'm gonna offend someone or whatever, but I find Academy season like really fun, like the, the Oscar buzz, you get the buzz around the BAFTAs as well. But hopefully, I'll be there one year. I mean, watch out next year. I'll be rocking up in my uh, looking all. Uh, that da that da dapper? Hopefully, I mean, probably not. I hope so. I really hope so. Uh, and also don't um, bully me in the comments if I offended you. I am 17, so I can report you for bullying and I will tell my parents. But yeah, I can't wait. It's gonna be good. We're gonna... I'm good. I'm fine. We're good. Right, let's, uh, let's go into the first nominations. Let's get this showboat show. Show that doesn't work, Max. You can't get the showboat on the road because it's a fucking boat. Let's get the show on the road. <laughs> so, this year we've had films boss it like Joker with the top amount of nominations with 11, and then we have a three way tie for second between 1917, but my personal favorite. The Irishman and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So I'm going to be starting off with quite an exciting category. Uh, I like this one, Supporting Actor. Uh, so for this we have Tom Hanks, Anthony Hopkins, Al Pacino, Joe Pesci and Brad Pitt with Irishman getting two nominations. Uh, I believe that Tom Hanks for A Beautiful Day in the Neighbourhood of his portrayal of um, Mr. Rogers. Is it Mr. Rogers? Fred Rogers. I'd love to see him win an Oscar obviously, but also uh, Brad Pitt as well apparently gave him an absolutely amazing performance in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood getting him the Golden Globe for Best Supporting Actor so I'm going to have to but <sighs> I'm going to go with Brad Pitt for this one I think Brad Pitt might have it in the bag I'd love to see him win an Oscar Brad Pitt because uh, he gives good speeches so in Best Supporting Actress we have uh, Kathy Bates, Laura Dern, Scarlett Johansson Florence Poot Poo no, forget it. And then also Margot Robbie for Bombshells. I don't know, I'm, one of my favourite films of, the, of this year, Jojo Rabbit, uh, directed by the one and only Taika Waititi. I watched this film, it's the first one I watched of 2020, 1st of January with some of my friends, and it's quite frankly one of the one of my favourite films. I, I want to see it do the double, so I'm going to put down Scarlett Johansson for Best Supporting Actress. So, for costume design, we have The Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, Joker, Little Women, and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So, uh, I've seen most of these. Uh, so I've seen so most of these. Um, so this is a really good category. Costume design is so important when it comes to film. I can really see something like um, Little Women winning a uh, best costume design. From what I've seen, it looks uh, amazing. The costume design as well. It's an era piece, so I can definitely see uh, it winning that. I'm gonna go see it. I just, I just haven't got the time. But yeah, Little Women for the costume design. Let's uh, move on to. Right, for makeup and styling, I'm probably going to go from what I've seen, I reckon 1917. It blows my mind uh, because obviously they're in like a long take. They have to layer the makeup gradually. Uh, between shots, they have to do that. I think that's so clever how they've done that. Um, it's just incredible. I, I <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to say for hair and makeup styling, 
No, makeup and hair styling. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to say 1917. Uh, for production design, I feel like I'm repeating myself. The Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, 1917, once upon one... one what? I'm actually gonna like swallow my tongue. Uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and Parasite. For production design, I'm gonna have to say uh, 1917. This is very close to Jojo Rabbit. As well as Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, as I believe have amazing, amazing production designs. But from what I've seen, just the scale of the sets and the locations where they went, how they transitioned in between all of them, and it still felt uh, continuous, it had brilliant continuity. Just for the pure scale and the factor of it, production design for 1917 really took my breath away, so I'm gonna have to say 1917 for production design. I'm actually, uh, mouth and fire. International feature film, uh, I'm gonna be completely honest, I haven't watched any of these. I want to give a prediction, so I'm gonna say Parasite, uh, mainly because it's everyone's raving about it, I need to see it. I know so many people are like, watch it, watch Parasite. Hey, uh, man, I think you should, uh, you should watch Parasite. Have you seen Parasite? That's uh, the South Korean one, Parasite. You should you should watch it, you'll like it. Yeah, I know, I need to watch it. Um, but from what I've seen, I think Parasite has got that in the bag. So for sound editing, I'm gonna have to go with Star Wars, Rise of the Skywalker. I saw this probably helps, I was in Dolby Audio. Uh, in the IMAX, so that probably <laughs> really helps. I really respect sound editing. Uh, I'm gonna use it again with natural selection. Basically, I did no original sound in natural selection. Basically, I had a nightmare. I talk about it in the documentary. I make a documentary about natural selection, so watch out for that. I will explain it. <sighs> you don't wanna listen to that. But yeah, sound editing is really hard, and how they just create these sounds out of nowhere is beyond me. Star Wars, Rise of Skywalker, it felt real, even though it wasn't real, so. I give a lot of credit to that. Um, sound mixing, I'm gonna have to give it to Ford vs Ferrari. I saw this in View Cinemas. I love the film, I thought it was brilliant. Um, and just the sound mixing really gets you engaged with the film, especially in the, those high intense racing scenes. But for live action short film and animated short film, I haven't seen any of them. I, not gonna lie, I haven't seen the trailers for them either or any extracts, so I don't feel like I'm in a suitable right amount of uh, information to give an, uh, uh, my prediction for them. And for documentary feature, we have American Factory, The Cave, Edge of Democracy, uh, For Salma and Honeyland. Uh, I'm very surprised that Apollo 11 wasn't on here. It was shortlisted, didn't get on, but I was very surprised about. Uh, I'm gonna have to say for Sa Sa Sama. Uh, for Sama, I've heard loads of stuff about this. A lot of the stuff I've seen on Instagram and stuff, everyone's been talking about it. So I'm gonna go for that. I personally haven't seen any of them. So, <laughs> so for cinematography, I'm very passionate about this. It should be 1917. Roger Deakins, absolute legend. He's won one Oscar, and that was for uh, Blade Runner uh, 2049. He's done found, like loads of films, like The Shawshank Redemption, what should have won best cinematography. Definitely deserves an Oscar for 1917. There was literal points where I was like, opening up my mouth like, what? <laughs> if you haven't seen 1917, um, Stop watching this and go see it. So for film editing, I was fairly surprised that 1917, out of all their nominations, that they didn't get one for film editing. So Ford vs Ferrari, The Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, Joker, and Parasite. Wasn't expecting some of those on there, uh, but also lovely to see that Jojo Rabbit got another nomination. Um, from what I've seen personally, I'm gonna have to go for Ford vs Ferrari again. I really like the film. I thought it was really, really well put together. It could have been longer. I wanted to see it longer, but personally, I think seeing like a three-hour film, I'd happily sit down and watch it. Um, if you do have the opportunity to see it in cinemas, definitely uh, take take up on the opportunity. Uh, best animated feature film. This is a huge, huge, huge award to win. Last year it was Into the Spider Verse. This year we have How to Train Your Dragon: The Hidden World. I Lost My Body. Claws. Missing Link and Toy Story Four. Very surprised about this. Again, Netflix are absolutely owning it again at the Oscars. Um, I saw Missing Link in cinemas. I really respect what Laika are doing, so I'm gonna have to say Missing Link for that one, purely because it won the Golden Globe. I enjoyed it. It was fun. Personally, I prefer some of the other Laika stuff. Uh, Paranorman, I quite I, I enjoy quite a bit. Also, Toy Story 4 was fun, uh, but I still prefer 3, uh, unfortunately. I don't know. So for visual effects, we have Avengers Endgame. It's only Oscar nomination. But yeah, uh, people are saying that Endgame got snubbed at the Oscars. I'm not sure how I feel about that. I feel like just because it makes a lot of money, it doesn't really change how good the film is. Um, but that's my opinion. Um, still, I thought I, I liked Endgame. I thought it was fun, but um, I do think there's films more suited for some of the awards. 
They done really well last year with Black Panther and Marvel. I, I would like to see it win an Oscar Avengers Endgame. But I think The Irishman might be the dark horse in that category. So original score, we have Joker, Little Women, Marriage Story, 1917, and Star Wars, Rise of Skywalker. Again, I'm going to have to say Star Wars. Uh, I feel like John Williams, brilliant score. I was trying to decide, I had a conversation the other day, if I prefer Hans Zimmer or John Williams. I think that's a really good video idea. I'm going to... I'm gonna use that as a video idea, but anyway, uh, I took my breath away. So original score. That's uh, that's that's your guy, John, John, John O. Williams. On to original screenplay. Screenplays I really get this year, especially I've really paid attention to screenplays and how films sound and how the actors perform them. So I've wrote quite a few screenplays. I have a few going. I've started new projects, seeing how I feel, doing a bit of more writing. I I enjoy, I really enjoy it. A skill that I definitely need to get better at. Um, but I guess with every film you get better. I'm gonna say Knives Out for this one. Love Knives Out. I think it's absolutely brilliant. I'm surprised it hasn't got more nominations on here, especially for editing. Incredible. Knives Out. Yeah, uh, Ryan Johnson absolutely uh, smashed it basically. For adapted screenplay, we have The Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, Joker, Little Women, and Two Popes. I didn't realize Jojo Rabbit was an adapted screenplay. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go for Jojo Rabbit. I think it's adorable how it's written. I think there's some really, really brilliant lines in there. I'll keep saying. Keeps taking my breath away, so I say the best adapted screenplay, Jojo Rabbit. That's for you, buddy. We're getting the uh, the business end now. We're gonna do uh, best lead actor. So the nominees are Antonio Banderas, who's been nominated for Puss in Boots. That was a joke. <coughs> he has a lead role in the film Pain and Glory. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, surprisingly, I'm surprised by that one. Not saying he did he did a terrible performance. No, that sounds rude. No, but Leonardo DiCaprio, good on him. Getting another. Get another um, nomination. Uh, Adam Driver, Joaquin Phoenix, and uh, Jonathan Price. I'm gonna have to say Joaquin Phoenix for Joker. Just, just inspiring performance. Best leading actress. Uh, we have uh, Cynthia Everido. Everio. Cynthia Everio. Uh, Scarlett Johansson again. Sario's Rowan. Charlize Theron and uh, Renee Zellweger. But I really like to see Scarlett Johansson to win it. Not just because I have a little crush on her. But I think she's an amazing actress as well. Uh, but I think Renee Zellweger, judging from what my mum said, apparently she gave an absolutely amazing performance in, in uh, Judy. So I'm going to have to go with her. Uh, uh, also, she won the Golden Globe. So that's going from what I've heard from the... I need to change my camera battery. Otherwise, I'm screwed. Oh. Battery's changed, everything's good. Will you get in there, please? No, that's not in. That's what she said. Right, battery's changed, we're all good. We have a bit more life uh, to record. <laughs> that would have been a nightmare. So, moving on, probably the one I really look out to uh, is uh, uh, Best Director. This is probably one of my favourite categories. Uh, I love looking at the directors. But, <laughs> but you know what I mean, it's just, uh, it's just a big deal. So, the nominees for Best Director are Martin Scorsese, Todd Phillips, Sam Mendes, Quentin Tarantino, and uh, Bon John Who? How? And Bon John How? I'm gonna have to say 1917. Uh, Sam Mendes, he did a smashing job. He he's he's one of my biggest inspirations. I love Sam Mendes films. He's got knighted this year. I love Skyfall. I, I even quite like Spectre as well. Uh, but also I've seen his other stuff like the say stage adaptation of Time Chocolate Factory that I actually really enjoyed. I love the stuff he does. He just did an incredible job. This film just yeah it definitely deserves it just a direction but uh i'd say honorable mention maybe Tom phillips joker judging how he's adapted his directing style to fit something to make it feel really uneasy like going from like the hangover to a different type of comedy where comedy is made up to be scary rather than funny uh i'd love to i would really love to see sam Mendes win this one um as you know he's a, he's a british director as well uh really truly inspiring <laughs> Uh, what, what? Oh, I'm so tired. <laughs> so, best picture, the nominations are Ford versus Ferrari, The Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, Joker, Little Women, Marriage Story, 1917, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Parasite. I'm very happy that Ford versus Ferrari is on there. I would really, really, really love to see Jojo Rabbit take it. I, I, I still think, I think Taika Waititi should have got a nomination for best director. Jojo Rabbit really was a good film. But also, 1917, I've warned about it so many times. But then again, you have Joker. Ford vs Ferrari, I really liked. Little woman, little woman, big woman, cardboard box. This one's really, really, uh, because there's a difference between my prediction and what I want to happen. So, my prediction to win Best Picture in the 2020, 92nd annual Oscars is... My heart says Jojo Rabbit, but my head says 1917. So I'm gonna go 
1917 is going to win Best Picture at the Oscars. Um, just, I don't have to even talk about it, but yeah, so there are my predictions for the 20... <laughs> I don't have to talk about it, I went on enough about it, long enough to... to <laughs> So, that does it for my 2020 Oscar predictions. If you did enjoy the video, make sure you subscribe and watch all of my other ones. I did talk about my other film, Natural Selection. There should be a link um, somewhere uh, in the corner to go watch that. Tell me down below what you think is going to win Best Picture. Uh, I'll make sure to get back to all messages as well. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, lads. See ya. Oh, no, goodbye. Thank you, that, that, that CEO was really, that didn't really sit well with me. And goodbye. Whoop. Oh yeah, baby, sing it. You better subscribe, you better subscribe, you better subscribe down low. Yeah, ba 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 oh. Oh, 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 baby. You better subscribe, subscribe, you better subscribe. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I'd like to have to start my feet. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I'd like to start off my speech by saying thank you uh, for my arms for always being by my side. No, really, I'd like to thank my feet for always holding me up. I'd like to thank my fingers. I can, uh, I can always count on them. And also I'd like to thank my uh, ears always um, always uh, listening out for me. And finally I'd like to thank my mouth for always talking me into doing everything. Uh, <laughs> this is, uh, this is... This is a uh, this is why I haven't got a girlfriend. <laughs>